Hey guys, this is Market Update. In this video, we'll look at the bull market carrying on. The show goes on. US liquidity cycle inflecting to the upside still. Global M2 looking to potentially break out to the upside. All very good for risk assets, especially Bitcoin and crypto. Now, we'll also look at where we are in this cycle towards the end of this video. I still think we're still mid-stage, early mid-stage. Altcoins tend to outperform as a block, right? All altcoins versus Bitcoin tends to outperform towards the end of a cycle. That could come in line with potentially some better news in relation to US regulation and crypto. For right now, I think we're kind of peak bearishness. So we'll discuss that. Right now for Bitcoin, we broke out of this mini downtrend that we've been in. You know, 20 something percent pullback from the all time high is totally normal and natural. So this pullback was what, 23%, 25% broke this mini downtrend here this week. So that shows us that potentially, you know, we are going to be consolidating here, maybe for a next move. As long as inflation keeps playing ball, it's still way too high. But the central bank has said, look, we're not raising rates anymore. We're going to be a little bit more dovish. We're looking to pause here. And then the next move is potentially a little bit more dovish. So you can price that in, right? It doesn't really matter about where inflation is. It just matters what the central bank policy is because this market is pricing in the future all the time. So if the future is to be more dovish than now, even though it's a little bit, right, then that's going to be positive. And you've seen in other countries, China leads the rest. So they've been easing. Europe is looking to cut rates in June. They've signposted that. So they're easing. So that's two out of the three big blocks that are easing. Now, obviously, we hope that inflation just inflects a little bit or you know, doesn't inflect to the upside. And that means the Fed can be a bit easier, generally good for you know money supply, liquidity, like we've seen. So that's where we are. I think we're just waiting for that to come out, right? So we need inflation to just play ball a little bit and the Fed can be a little bit easier. That's good for this bull market. If you do trade, check out Bybit, link in description. You just make a deposit in trade. You can get up to $30,000 as a deposit bonus there. Uh, you can find the details via the link below. There's a lot to argue about on the macro side unemployment rates, inflation rates, and you know we could argue for days about that. It's really unhelpful for the normal individual investor, right? We have a choice, which is we know that if we hold our value in fiat currency, it's going to get debased. And that means it doesn't hold its purchasing power. So we need to get out of that into assets that hold their value. So the real question is, well, how much Bitcoin do you want versus the S&P or the NASDAQ index? You can have any amount of those that you want, but that's really what we're in. And then to perform a little bit better, we want to make sure that we are allocating when prices are low within their trends to the upside. If you look at the stock market, NASDAQ, Bitcoin, you know, what's it pricing in? It's pricing in real wealth creation and growth a little bit, and then it's pricing in the expansion of money supply. And that's why over the last few years, we've had this huge expansion in money supply. Go and look at the charts, right? There's a huge expansion in the percentage gains of the stock market as well. Now, if GDP is like 2%, 3%, why is the stock market, this broad index of the market itself, going up at 12% a year? Doesn't add up, unless that's currency debasement being priced in. So get out of fear, make your choice where you want to be. Allocate towards the bottom of cycles to get better returns. You can see we're going into mid-cycle here right now. So this is still fine. The, the bull market is still ahead, in my opinion, right? This is going to be rocky, but we're, you know, mid, early mid cycle. So, of course, at the top of cycles, it's the worst time to invest. And you're going to pay the highest prices. Generally, you know, if you're looking to outperform, then you want to be allocating more towards the bottom of cycles, you know, and less towards the top. If you're just looking to dollar cost average, life's easy. Bitcoin outperforms everything. It's going up. 50 to 60 percent annualized anyway who, who who cares right so it's up to the individual but this cycle we'll see if it breaks to the upside bitcoin and crypto are going to follow and it's following the same timelines as every other cycle before so right here early mid stage if you look at global m2 seems to be consolidating right now with a potential breakout towards the end of this year which would you know line up perfectly with each previous bitcoin cycle which is you have the halving kind of chopped around for a bit six months later it's like you know off to the moon and if m2 does that then bitcoin and crypto will as well and you can actually see this this is from jamie coots the correlation between m2 
global money supply from all the different central banks, um, you know, and bank deposits, etc. So as global two M two increases, it has a very strong correlation with uh, positive Bitcoin price appreciation as well. When M two comes off, it actually uh, correlates with that as well. So there's a strong correlation here, and as you can see here. The rate of change in money supply is more important than the nominal value. So you can see Bitcoin and global money supply just in a small uptrend here. So cycles are different. We don't know what this inflection is going to be, how strong it's going to be. Uh, but if it's inflecting to the upside, we had a huge drawdown. That was the bear market. Look, it's not a bear market anymore. M2 isn't a bear market. Liquidity is coming out of the bear market and Bitcoin is as well. Yes, you can trade cycles. We will love to do that. But I implore everyone to take money that you don't need for your short term liabilities out of fiat currency because it is losing purchasing power because it's getting debased. It's as simple as that. So money you don't need have to put into assets, whether that's BTC, S&P or the Nasdaq. I would only buy dollar den denominated uh, non Bitcoin assets like S&P and Nasdaq uh, because most other currencies are weak. And if you invest in stocks, for example, in the UK or Europe, you're having to invest with pounds or euros, right? And those economies are fairly weak and the currencies, you know, fairly weak as well. So if you denominate your gains in dollars, the percentage gains that you've got aren't great. Those stock markets perform pretty poorly in dollar terms and against the dollar denominated stock markets like the S&P and the Nasdaq. In any case, right now, See, Bitcoin is in volatile sideways consolidation, but this is clearly an uptrend bull market right here that you can see. So this volatile and trending bear market is not happening right now. And that's just going along with M2 liquidity cycle. It's, it's really obvious. So a lot of the arguments about specific, you know, 0.1 difference in inflation. Yeah, it doesn't matter when the assets growing 50, 60 percent a year. Right. So we can see that as well here. Uh, declining volatility during bear markets. You can see that here. This is volatility right here of the Bitcoin price. Increasing volatility during bull markets. And you can see we've inflected again. So are we going to now just switch? No, you can see M2 and liquidity. You know, they're still early on in any potential uptrend. So yes, volatile. But I think this is a bull market. And so any drawdowns are great news um, because it looks to be an uptrend. So drawdowns are to buy because I'm looking to allocate out of any fiat into a stronger asset. Why can't you hold your savings in the fiat currency? Because the fiat currency system is specifically designed to expand in supply. And therefore, the currency you hold gets debased by new supply. And so assets that can't be printed or made at the same pace of that money supply, right, will go up in value versus that currency. It just takes more currency units to buy the same amount of assets. Now, we can actually use this to our advantage. So taking debt in the fiat currency, which is exactly what it was designed for. Fiat currency is designed specifically for banks to create credit, give it to borrowers. Borrowers can take advantage of that. And the fiat system is designed where you take credit, more currency units are printed to debase the value of that credit you took out previously and therefore make that credit cheaper over time. It's a system and it does what it's designed to do, but it's certainly not designed to uh, keep your purchasing power in that currency unit over time. You can see this is an exponential growth in money supply. That's exactly what this system is designed to do. Use it for what it's designed for, which is taking credit if you can afford it. Don't overdo it, don't leverage, right? But that's what the fiat system is designed for. And then Bitcoin is just different. It's an actual asset, right? It's a bearer asset. It's not credit. And it's designed to hold value in relation to other things that debase. It couldn't be clearer. It's, it's so clear to see this side by side, a system designed to debase versus one that isn't. This cycle is far from over then, in my opinion. You can see all of that data. Now, when it comes to crypto specifically, some good news and some bad news. The bad news is that Ethereum... The spot ETFs are going to get rejected next week, 99.9% .9 chance. Consensus have already actually proactively sued the SEC here. This is essentially the SEC trying to slow down and stop crypto adoption in the States. And that's because there are powerful banks that don't want it to get adopted as quickly as it is. So that's just it. It's going to be mired in 
these cases and you know all of this for a very long time. It's pretty bad news now, right? You're not going to get the inflows that Bitcoin is getting. You're not going to get the certainty that Bitcoin is getting. And Ethereum, all the other smart contract chains and all the DeFi protocols, you know, essentially the regulator is saying, don't launch stuff, all right? We don't want new products. We don't want you to launch anything. We don't want you to launch tokens. So that mires the industry as an uncertainty and it just, you know, creates weaker price action than there otherwise may be. So that's bad news. However, what's better news is that uh, both Democrats and Republicans came together to vote to repeal SAB 121, which was the SEC essentially creating uncertainty and opaqueness within crypto. So this was preventing custodians from holding digital assets, which is specifically designed to make the crypto industry more unsafe and uncertain. So crazy. In any case, this may be vetoed by the president, which would show us the lines where, you know, maybe his policy is versus the other sides. This is pretty good news because it shows that, you know, the people that actually make the laws are coming together and saying, hey, this industry is kind of big right now and we kind of need to regulate this properly and we can't just say no and yes, right, and, and do that. So this is potentially good news for the direction of travel. But man, all of this is just going to take a long time to get sorted out. If the SEC directly come out next week and just say Ethereum is a security, it's hard to believe that that or other smart contract chains or any DeFi protocols are really going to get bid up throughout the summer. Maybe they get bid up if things are going to change after the election. So that's where I see things. It's kind of a muddy type of investment. Um, you know, it's not a great place to be. It doesn't feel very good if you're being attacked, but that's the way it is. Bitcoin is separate from that. It's got a lot of regulatory clarity. Just a much easier trade, in my opinion. Uh, if you do trade, check out Bybit. 30k deposit bonus down in the description. The Crypto Investor course has 300 videos as well. If you want to get up to speed in crypto, I'll link that down below as well. I'm James with Mazzy G. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.